you know, there was correlation between people who deal with rats and have a lot of rat sightings in the neighborhood and and higher rates of depression. So yeah, this battle is going to continue, but hopefully this rat summit, which is also going on today, um, you know, we'll learn how to refine our approach, even if we're still, you know, calling this a war. Liam, I have to be clear about what Byers is suggesting here. She says a harm reduction strategy. What does that mean? She's don't kill the rats, just let them live and we coexist? No, I mean, definitely th these people are talking still about emerging ways to control these pests, but it's more about control and constraining the population because, as one of these experts was saying, probably not going to win this war but how can we kind of maintain and keep this population down as low as possible and limit our interactions with these animals okay liam quigley covers parks and sanitation for wnyc you can learn much more about him covering the rat summit at our news site gothamist liam thank you thank you very much WNYC supporters include Netflix presenting Will and Harper. Best friends Will Ferrell and Harper Steele embark on a road trip to reintroduce Harper to the country she loves after coming out as a trans woman. Now playing in theaters on Netflix September 27th. WNYC is a media partner of the Creative Time Summit, bringing together artists, activists, and thought leaders from around the world to discuss strategies for social change. September 20th through 22nd at the Brooklyn Academy of Music, summit.creativetime.org. Marketplace Morning Report is coming up next, and then in 10 minutes at 9 o'clock, it's the BBC News Hour on WNYC. Let's check in with London and see what they're working on. Hello, London. Good morning, WNYC. I'm Tim Franks. On today's news hour, Israel declares a new phase in its conflict with Hezbollah. Where now after the attacks which injured thousands? That's BBC News Hour, coming up at nine on WNYC. 70 and sunny right now. We have advisories for a coastal flooding right now along Manhattan beaches and along parts of the Jersey Shore. The Jersey Shore also has advisories for rip currents, fast moving water that pulls us away from the shore and out to sea. So we'll need to be careful. We're going to the beach today. Partly sunny and 80 for a high on this Thursday in the city. And then tomorrow, partly, uh, actually, partly sunny with a slim chance of afternoon showers. Interest rates are on their way down. What does that mean for you? Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Amazon Business, focused on offering smart business buying solutions, leaving time to focus on growth. More at AmazonBusiness.com. And by C3 Generative AI, verified traceable answers, secure, hallucination-free, LLM agnostic, IP liability-free, C3.AI. This is Enterprise AI. For a marketplace, I'm Sabri Beneshor, in for David Brancaccio. Now that the Fed has started to cut interest rates, are we headed back to that world of cheap money, cheap mortgages? What do lower interest rates mean for you? Marketplace's Nancy Marshall Genzer is here to talk about it. Hi, Nancy. Good morning. Uh, so how will yesterday's rate cut, a uh, half point, affect the typical consumer? The cost of borrowing for things like car loans, credit cards, and personal loans should be dropping soon. But the Fed rate cut was already baked into mortgages. Um, still, Powell says the Fed's rate cuttings will help in the long run. I mean, ultimately, by getting inflation broadly down and getting those rates normalized and getting the housing, housing cycle normalized, that's the best thing we can do for householders. So what is going to happen with mortgages then? Well, that depends on what the 10-year Treasury bond does. Mortgage rates are loosely tied to the yield or interest rate on 10-year Treasuries. It might trend up now, so you could see mortgage rates actually rise. Oh, my gosh. So where? what do we do with that? <laughs> As always, Sabri, what happens next depends on the data. The Fed releases projections about things like interest rates four times a year. Yesterday, Fed officials predicted another half-point reduction in rates this year. But Fed Chair Powell kept emphasizing the Fed is not on a preset course and will take it meeting by meeting. 
the actual things that we do will depend on the way the economy evolves. We can go quicker if that's appropriate. We can go slower if that's appropriate. We can pause if that's appropriate. And Powell says the Fed isn't ready to declare mission accomplished on inflation just yet. All right. Marketplaces, Nancy Marshall Genzer, thank you so much. You're welcome. Grocery chains Kroger and Albertsons want to merge. The Federal Trade Commission does not want that, saying a merger would reduce competition, and it sued to block the deal back in February. Closing arguments wrapped up this week, and at the center of the case is who Kroger and Albertsons actually compete with. Also, what is a supermarket? Marketplace's Stephanie Hughes has that. In cases like this, the FTC has to define the market, determine who's in it, and what would happen if two of those competitors merged. Chris Seggers is a law professor at Cleveland State University. You have to know what sort of competition they would face if they raised prices. What alternatives could consumers turn to? In this case, the FTC is defining the supermarket market. Douglas Ferrer, the agency's director of public affairs, says it considers supermarkets to be one-stop shops for groceries. They typically have a broad and deep assortment of products and a variety of package sizes. And lots of inventory. Also bakeries, delis, maybe a florist. Ferrer says the FTC counts Walmart, the nation's largest grocer, and Target as supermarkets, along with the stores owned by the two companies in this case, Albertsons and Kroger. He says they're rivals that compete with each other on price. And if they merge, that competitive dynamic will go away and we could see prices rise. The FTC says there are other retailers that sell groceries that don't compete with supermarkets in the same way. Those include wholesale club stores like Costco, which often require membership fees, and dollar stores, along with what it calls limited assortment grocers like Aldi that carry fewer brands. It also excludes premium natural and organic stores like Whole Foods, which it says generally have higher prices. So the FTC isn't considering any of them as supermarkets, says law professor Chris Seggers. You know, admittedly, the market definitions that the government alleges here are pretty narrow. Sayers says the FTC is arguing that while consumers can shop for some of the same products at these other retailers, those stores are still not substitutes for a supermarket. They're not interchangeable enough that no one will be hurt by this merger. One of the companies involved, Albertsons, said in a statement that the way the FTC is viewing the grocery industry is, quote, outdated. And Brian Albrecht, chief economist at the International Center for Law and Economics, says the grocers are pushing for a much wider definition of a supermarket, one that includes those club, dollar, and organic stores. They argue if you allow the merger through, because we have these competitors, we're not going to be able to raise prices. In fact, we need this merger in order to compete with Walmart and Costco. Albrecht says ultimately defining a market is meant to help figure out how it will then change if one particular deal goes through. I'm Stephanie Hughes for Marketplace. All right, let's do the numbers. Markets are loving that rate cut. Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ futures are all up in the 1.2 to 2.2% range. The Dow futures up 478 points. The yield on the 10-year Treasury is 3.761%. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Progressive Insurance, helping protect small businesses and the owners who run them. Whether a plumber, accounting business, or restaurant, Progressive can help with over 30 customizable coverages. Online quotes available in as little as six minutes at ProgressiveCommercial.com. And by Barron's Streetwise podcast, hosted by Barron's associate editor, Jack Howe, offering insights each week on business leaders and trend spotters, available everywhere. The Securities and Exchange Commission this week said it wants to allow many stocks to trade not just in dollars and cents, but dollars and cents and half cents. So what difference does that make? Marketplace's Justin Ho has that. Every time stocks are bought and sold, there's always a third party that makes the trade happen. There's a market maker, somebody who's providing the liquidity in that market, who's connecting the buyers and the sellers. Evan Raleigh at the University of Connecticut says that market maker gets a cut of every trade by giving the seller of a stock a little less than what the buyer pays. The cut can vary depending on how hard it is to match a buyer and a seller. But for popular stock trades, that cut is often the bare minimum, a penny. That doesn't seem like too much, but there are a lot of trades that are going at the minimum. That means that probably the minimum could be lower. The Securities and Exchange Commission argues that by allowing popular stocks to trade in half-cent increments, transaction costs will fall. 
Thomas Ernst at the University of Maryland says while individual investors might not notice a difference, a half a penny here, a half a penny there across millions of investors and millions of trades is what adds up to considerable savings for retail investors. The SEC's new rule will take effect in November of next year. I'm Justin Ho for Marketplace. And in New York, I'm Sabri Beneshore with the Marketplace Morning Report. From APM, American Public Media.